the ASCO 2022, we had two important studies in sort of the same field of metastatic breast cancer, that is HER2 negative, HER2 low uh, metastatic breast cancer, one study including triple negative, the other one just doing a hormone receptor positive population. The first study was a plenary Destiny Breast 04, the second study an all presentation Tropics 02. At ASCO 2022, we had one plenary talk for breast cancer, and that was the Destiny Breast 04 study in metastatic hormone receptor positive HER2 low breast cancer. So what's HER2 low? It's what we formerly called HER2 negative, so 1 plus, 2 plus ish negative. And this study was about trastuzumab deruxtecan, which is already approved in Europe for HER2 positive breast cancer, and the study now tested it in patients with a lower expression of HER2 on the tumor cells. It was a um, patients could have been pretreated with one to two lines of prior chemotherapy, um, ob obviously endocrine uh, therapy if appropriate, and the, the study also included hormone receptor negative patients, but um, fewer ones. So the design was trastuzumab deruxtecan versus treatment of physician's choice. That could have been chemotherapy, capecitabine, gemcitabine, eribulin, or a taxane. And there was a two-to-one randomization, about four, uh, 560 patients. And to make a long story short, and that's why it was a plenary and published the same day in the New England Journal, the stud study showed that the trastuzumab deruxtecan improved PFS by about 50% and also overall survival by about a third um, in patients with HER2 low advanced breast cancer. That is hormone receptor positive uh, as well as triple negative um, tumors. And uh, the, the quantitative results were about like the PFS with trastuzumab roxicam was about 10, 10 months versus uh, four, four to five months. Uh, so a difference about uh, five months, the same difference in overall survival. The main endpoints were in the hormone receptor positive cohort, but the subgroup analysis showed that the treatment effect was independent of the hormone receptor status and also independent of the quantitative HER2 expression, so either 1 plus or 2 plus fish negative. So um, the study is immediately practice changing, I would say, because of the overall survival difference versus a monochemotherapy, which is the current standard of care in these patients. and the drug is available in Europe, so we're eagerly awaiting for the extension of the approval to be able to use it in our patients. With saying it's immediately practice changing, I mean that the benefit risk ratio is a positive one. The safety issues we know with the drug, trastuzumab deruxtecan, it's mostly hematological toxicity, GI toxicity and ILD. There was about a 12% ILD rate in this study, mostly grade one or two. Unfortunately, there were three deaths um, due to ILD, so this shows that we have to be careful with the drug, act on early signs of ILD, but otherwise, given the overall survival benefit versus monochemotherapy, I still say that it's a practice-changing study. For the ASCO 2022, we saw the TROPICS-2 data presented by Dr. Hope Rugel. Uh, TROPICS-2 was a study in advanced hormone receptor positive, HER2 negative um, metastatic breast cancer in a very advanced population. With uh, They had to have had already one line of endocrine therapy, a CDK4-6 inhibitor and a taxane. And the formal inclusion criteria said uh, two to four lines of prior chemotherapy and um, only patients with a very quick progression after the neoadjuvant setting were allowed to have only uh, one line of uh, chemotherapy. So very advanced population and about uh, 540 patients, one-to-one uh, -one randomization, saxituzumab govitecan, which is approved in a triple negative disease already um, versus uh, treatment of physician's choice being a monochemotherapy. And um, the results were that there was a hierarchical testing schema. So um, PFS, the study met its primary endpoint. PFS was significantly improved with a hazard ratio of 0.66, but only a 1.5 median 
um, difference in, uh, in, in the month of uh, progression-free survival uh, from 4.0 to 5.5%, showing that this is a very heavily pretreated population. And what we could see with the curves, are sort of they dropped immediately about 20% of the patients didn't react to either therapy. They looked at the overall survival at an interim analysis. Um, the hazard ratio was 0.86, but there was no significant difference, but the data was not mature yet. With regard to safety, nothing new from what we know with succituzumab, govitican, um, there's hematological toxicity, GI toxicity, and all other toxicities that are sort of involved with this drug, like also alopecia in a couple of patients and um, fatigue, obviously. So I would say these are very interesting um, findings, but I think the, line, uh, the setting was just too late to see the overall magnitude of the benefit that this drug could reach in hormone receptor positive or to negative breast cancer. I would love to see earlier line um, data to see whether it could really improve the armamentarium of treatment options that we have in that disease. Mm -hmm.